Hi there folks, welcome back to another video. This is Don at Affordable Desert Living. Well folks, uh, the home build continues to plod along slowly but surely. Uh, I had a couple things that interrupted the plans uh, of my build. I had um, a, a close personal friend and also a family member both pass away within a matter of weeks of each other. So the home build has slowed down a bit. But today I wanted to talk about the issue of protecting all of that wood in the structure of my floor. And I asked my neighbors, do you have any issues with termites? And they said, no, we've been here for a long time, no issues with termites. But all the data online says that Cochise County has termites. And so I thought, let's start dealing with those before it even happens. So in Cochise County and the Sierra Vista area where I live, there are two main species of termites that dwell here. The first are called subterranean termites, and the next are called drywood termites. So I chose this stuff called Boracare. I got it on Amazon and I had to get two gallons of it. It comes in one gallon jugs like this and it's not cheap. It was about uh, $90 for each jug. So you can imagine I wanted to be super careful and put this on correctly. So I'm not a big fan of super toxic chemicals. You'll never see me using Roundup or anything that a lot of, unfortunately, folks these days use. So Boracare is an actual ingredient in a natural mineral salt called disodium octaborate tetrahydrate. But if you have pets and children, you're going to want to especially read the label to make sure you're totally safe while you use this. That said, you're going to want rubber gloves to protect your hands and old clothing. By the way, I'm not sponsoring Boracare in any way. I'm not getting uh, free samples or anything like that. So in the instruction booklet, Boracare actually gives you the mixing ratio, Boracare to water, that you need for different species of termites. I went with one to one, as in one gallon of Boracare and one gallon of water, because essentially I wanted to make sure that uh, I did things well. So while the roller is pretty wet, that allows me to get into these corners a little better. Though not perfect, it should suffice okay. Pressure treated wood is only good for about roughly 10 years. Uh, and then the termites can have their way with it. So this stuff is good. Everything I've read for the lifetime of the building. That's not, that's not good. That's a lot of expensive liquid thrown away. Not good. Okay. I hope I still have enough. That was a very expensive mistake. So the little mini paint roller can't get in the corners, so that's why I'm using a sponge, trying to be accurate here. 
Um, was it uh, Nancy Reagan in the 80s said, just say no to termites? I think she said, yeah. Oops, almost dropped it. So as you can imagine, I've got to do the underside of all those beams and joists as well. So I did an experiment. I used the paint roller and I used a sponge to see which would do the best job and be more thorough in coating the underside. And the sponge won out. Um, probably slower than the roller, but let's get to it. Easy does it. I don't want to kick the pan over like the other time. It's termite proofing and calisthenics. Okay, how to turn the camera off with gooped up gloves. I'll use the stick. Well folks, proof I do read your comments and, and uh, basically take suggestions if they'll uh, improve my build here. Uh, I'm going to read you this comment. This is from Marcel Racine. Are you accepting that the shims, which do work great for some things, are leaving you with a significantly smaller contact patch as compared to the full surface of your joists. I understand what you're trying to accomplish, but a smaller contact patch over each contact location can compromise the structural strength of your house. Just an observation from a 32 plus year general contractor. So thanks so much for your input, and uh, rest assured, I listened. Okay, as per the suggestion, I'm going to jack this building up for the third time. Third time's a charm, right? And this time I'm going to put these shims, a stack of them side by side, to create a bigger footprint for the building to set on, just as was suggested. A little more blocking. Should do the trick. Now the neck's too high, so we'll lower that by turning the button on the jack as we did before counterclockwise. And there we can push it down. Now we should be able to jack it up. There we go. Now we'll do the other side of the building to make it uh, come up at the same time. There, now as you can see, I can put two of those under there. There we go, so now we got double the width. Now, back to crawling under the building to get the rest done. I think I'm getting faster and better at crawling on my belly for some reason. Hmm, good exercise. Not doing Pilates, so this is going to have to do. Here we go. Almost done. Okay, done. Well, I gotta let the building down. Here we go. The magical sound of the job being completed. Just in time, because it's starting to rain. 
So as always, folks, thank you so much for watching these videos. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. That'll let you know when my next video is produced. And there'll be lots more videos about my home build coming up. Thanks again. See you on the next video.